All right, so let's take a look at how to construct different shapes in Desmos using the geometry padlet. We're gonna start by first constructing a rhombus. And what you notice on my slide is I already have an angle set up here, angle A, B, C. And what we're going to do is use angle A, B, C, as well as our line segment tool and our compass tool here to construct a rhombus. Now, one thing that we're gonna notice about angle ABC is that segment AB, this leg of our angle is significantly shorter than segment BC, uh, the other leg of our angle. And that's gonna be very important for us because when we go to use our compass tool, we are always going to use the shorter leg of the angle, the shorter line segment. And I'll explain why we're gonna do that right now. The very first thing we're gonna do is take the compass tool and actually choose the segment to be our radius. So I'm gonna choose line segment AB. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to center it over point B. And by centering this new circle over point B, we see that our circle intersects here with line segment BC. If you did that the opposite way, if you chose line segment BC and centered it over, you would notice that there's no point of intersection between line segment AB and your new circle. So for that purpose, select your shorter line segment and first centered over point B. Now that we have circle B, right, we call it circle B because it's centered there, I'm gonna take my point tool and I'm gonna plot a point where circle B intersects line segment BC and I'm going to label that point D. So now I have a new point and it is also on the circumference of our circle just like point A and I'm actually gonna use my compass tool two more times. And I'm going to continue with my path, selecting my shorter line segment, AB. This time, I'll center my circle over A, and then I'll select that segment again, and I'll center my circle over D. So now what we have here are three circles all constructed over my original angle, ABC. And we notice that my two new circles, circle A and circle D, they intersect at point B, but then also at this point out here. So let's plot a point there, and let's label that point E. Now, in order to construct my rhombus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my line segment tool and connect point A to point E, point E to point D, and here I have my rhombus. And if you want to see it a little more clearly, you can always take your select tool and click the different circles and hide them. And by hiding them, I can see what's there. I can even check this line segment here and hide it. Uh, but then what I will need to do is connect B to D again. And here we have a constructed rhombus. But again, unhiding our images here, this is what it would look like fully constructed. On our following slide, we're going to be constructing an inscribed hexagon. Now, inscribed is the term we use to represent a shape that is fully in a circle with all of its vertices touching the circle's circumference, that circle's edge. So in order to construct an inscribed hexagon, we're going to take our compass tool, and we're going to select line segment AB three times. The first time, we'll center our circle over A. The second time, we'll center our circle over B. And the third time, we're gonna put our circle off to the side for a brief moment. Because in order to find out where this third circle goes, I'm first going to need to take my line segment tool again and connect point A, go through point B to its opposite side, point C. Right, and I'm going to label this as point C. Select and label as point C. Now that I know where point C is, and again, we found point C by dragging our line segment from A through the center of B to its opposite side, we essentially created a diameter for circle B here. Now I can take my third circle and plot it on top of point C. And what you'll notice now is it goes through, C, it's on point C and through point B. And now I have three congruent circles all through points A, B, and C. Now take your point tool, go ahead and plot a point everywhere circles A and B and C intersect each other, right? We already have a point here at C, A, and B. So we're now we're just going around the circumference of circle B. The final step is to take your line segment tool and connect those points all the way around the circumference of circle B, connecting C to this point, this point here, this point to A, and this point back up. And what we have here in blue is our inscribed hexagon. And again, if you want to see it more clearly, select your shapes, hide them, select and hide, 
I can click this line segment in the center, hide, and this point in the middle, hide, and there you go. A perfectly inscribed hexagon, right, where all the vertices are on the circle's circumference. Take a look here at an inscribed triangle this time. All of our steps are exactly the same except for the final step for a hexagon. I'm going to select line segment AB three times, first centering it over A, then over B, and the third one off to the side. Okay, and just like a hexagon, I'm going to take my line segment and I'm going to plot it on point A, drag it through point B to the opposite side of the circle and plot it there. And I'm going to label that as point C. Now I can take my third circle and I know to plot it right here on point C going through point B. And just like our hexagon, we're going to plot a point everywhere these three circles intersect with each other. Already one there at A, down here, down here, already one here at C and B. Now here's where we get different between the inscribed hexagon and the inscribed triangle. Instead, like on the hexagon, we connected all six points around the circumference of circle B. Now we're gonna connect every other point. So I'll start here at A and I'll skip this point and come to the next one. And then I'll skip point C and go to the next one. And then skip this point and come back to A. And what you see that we have constructed right here is a triangle inscribed in this circle. And again, I can come through and I can select and hide my other shapes and other images like these line segments. And you see here a perfectly inscribed triangle. The final one we're going to do is an inscribed square. So for an inscribed square, what we're going to start with is actually a circle tool. I want you to draw a circle, and then we're gonna take the line segment tool and connect the point on the circle circumference through the center to the opposite side. And what we're going to do now is construct perpendicular bisectors for this line segment. So I'm going to take my compass tool, I'm going to choose the line segment we just created, center it over one point on the edge, select it again, center it over the other point on the other circumference edge. Now, where these two circles overlap each other, where they intersect, I'm going to connect those points with the line segment tool. And what we have just constructed here is a perpendicular bisector for this line segment. It is both perpendicular, creating 90 degree right angles, as well as bisecting this line segment into two equal parts and vice versa. What we are really interested in is connecting this point right here with our original circle on top and bottom, and then using the line segment tool to connect all four of these points. And by doing that, we have just constructed a perfect square inscribed inside of a circle. And I can go through and hide all these, click and hide, click and hide, and you'll start to see the image that I am describing. And there you have it an inscribed square.